What's good with the fight fans, man? It's Kijana back with another fight card prediction. Uh, UFC on ESPN 30, Barbosa versus Chikadze. Um, actually should be a pretty good main event. They're both really good kickboxers. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. This is going to be my prelim predictions. Um, yeah, let's jump straight into it. Mana Martinez versus Guido Canetti. Um, I'm rocking with Mana Martinez just for the simple fact that I don't trust Guido, Guido's chin anymore, man. I never really did. Uh, he has an 8-5 and five record. Leo Mana Martinez has an 8-2 record. Uh, he is making his debut. <clears throat> he was supposed to fight, I think, two weeks ago, if I, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, but Guido has three KO slash TKO wins, three submission wins, one KO loss, and uh, four submission losses. For some reason, I thought he had more... KO losses in that that's not too bad but he does I I do remember him getting rocked a few different times in multiple fights so um he's been submitted four times that's not good uh he lost to Donna Badgerell by KO uh punches in the first round in his last fight he lost to Marlon Vera by rear naked choke that's not a bad loss to have Marlon Vera is a fucking he's a beast um <clears throat> Kyung Ho Kang triangle choked him Enrique Briona's rear naked choked him yeah so he's been rear naked choked a few times three times actually he got rear naked choked back in 2010 to cristiano marcello uh yeah i just i don't know he's 0 and 2 in his um his pro ex exhibition to alejandro perez and marco beltran i just don't trust guido canetti i don't know why um i'm gonna rock with Le uh, leomano martinez he's eight ko wins one submission loss and one decision loss don't I, I think the only thing that he needs to be careful with on this one is probably getting taken down he doesn't look like he has the best takedown defense or the best ground game uh guido canetti i think he averages two or three takedowns a fight so yeah I, I think that's the main thing that i'm worried about in this fight but i am going to pick martinez i think he's going to be the the favorite favorite for this fight uh, actually i don't know if the odds are up yet let me see oh no nah, they're not up he does have a reach advantage and a height advantage, 5'10 to 5'6, but Guido's usually the shorter fighter or the, and the smaller fighter in most of his fights, so. But I'm gonna rock with Mano Martinez. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna talk too much about that one. Next fight, Jamal Emmers versus Pat Sabatini. I am rocking with, fuck, dude. I put a question mark by this one just because uh, Sabatini's actually pretty decent on the ground. He's 14 and three record. Jamal Emmers is actually pretty well rounded as well he's got an 18 and 5 record my first instinct <clears throat> i did put a question mark by this fight my first instinct was to pick uh jamal emmers so i'm probably gonna roll with my gut feeling on this one sabatini has two ko wins slash tko nine submission wins uh one ko slash tko loss and two submission losses or, i mean two decision losses he's on a three fight winning streak he beat tristan Connolly, which isn't that impressive it's the same guy who fought uh on his debut against uh, Michelle Pajeda. Michelle Pajeda was doing fucking backflips and shit on, on him, and he, he lost. But, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like that's not a great opponent to have a win over. Even though Tr uh, Tristan Connolly's 14-7, and that's a horrible record. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I still can't believe that uh, Michelle Pajeda lost that guy. That should have been an easy win if he wasn't just being a stupid but I'm going off topic. Jamal Emmers is going to win this. I can see him probably getting, I mean, fuck, dude. He has three submission wins as well. Seven KO slash TKO wins, two KO slash TKO losses, and one sub loss. What's his sub loss to? So he lost a split decision to Gige Chikaze, who's fighting on the main event. Interesting. I actually remember that fight. He lost to Julian Arosa by head kick and punches on the Contender Series uh, back in 2018. I don't remember seeing that one. I'm trying to, I'm trying to recall that. Went on a four-fight win streak after that. Lost to Giga. He beat Vince Cachero um, by UD in his last fight. Yeah, I, I'm going to rock with Jamal Emmers on this one. Something's telling me he's probably going to get it done. Um, it'll probably, for some for some reason, I think it's going to go to decision. Or maybe a third-round uh, a third round TKO for Jamal Emmers. Um, next fight, JJ Otters versus Vanessa Demopoulos. Demopoulos. Uh, I watched a little bit of Vanessa's stuff. She's coming in on short notice. She's actually a pretty decent fighter, and she's got some... She's beat a few people that are in the UFC right now, so... And she's also lost to somebody that's in the UFC as well. Uh, she's one KO slash TKO win, three submission wins. 
She's more, she's mainly a grappler, but her hands actually do look pretty good. Two decision wins uh, and three decisions. She's only lost by decision. She's never been finished. Uh, she beat Cynthia Arkeo by TKO in the first round. It was a very quick fight. Uh, Lupita beat her by majority decision. She lost to Corey McKenna, which Corey McKenna's in the UFC now. Um, she beat Sam Hughes. Sam Hughes is in the UFC now. Who else? Cheyenne Bies in the UFC. She beat her in, uh, by, by TKO as a dislocated elbow uh, in her amateur days. And she lost to Caitlin Chukagin by TKO, which is not a bad loss to have because Chukagin is the top top ranked fighter in that division. So I mean, yeah, she's four and one as an amateur. Uh, she's got a little, she's got a good amount of fight experience, not too much. JJ Aldridge is pretty tough. She's pretty gritty. Uh, she likes to walk her opponents down. She usually throws just just hands. I don't feel like she mixes it up that much. I think I've said it in past videos that she needs to throw more kicks and mix it up a little bit more. She has been throwing a little bit uh, more calf kicks in some of her in some of her recent fights. Uh, she has two KO slash TKO wins, seven decision uh, wins, one KO slash TKO loss to Macy Barber, um, and one submission loss. Uh, she lost to Sabina Mazel by split decision. She, her last win was to Courtney Casey by split decision, which I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly that Courtney Casey should have won that fight, but it is what it is. She beat Laura Mueller. She beat uh, Pollyanna Viana. She beat Daniel Taylor. She has some decent wins on her, on her record. Um, Dang, she's had actually a good amount of amateur fights too before she even got her pro exhibition, which she lost to Tatiana Saras. Dang, some of, she's fought in a lot of opponents. She's fought in Rachel Rachel Ostevich in her amateur amateur fights. So she's at, I mean, yeah, JJ Aldridge is pretty decent. She's fought in some good some good opponents. Um, but I'm gonna roll with the debuter. I think she's gonna be an underdog, and I think I'm gonna put her in a parlay. I think it could potentially be a good good underdog pick like i said in uh, previous videos i like to kind of roll with the underdog fighter um chick fighters unless it's unless it's a fight going against amanda nunez or shevchenko then of course i'm going to pick them or certain certain chick fighters but uh for the for the majority if i see something if i see like it could be a close fight which i feel like this could be a close fight and it could probably be high output um i usually like to roll with the underdogs on this one especially for DraftKings. If it's too close for comfort, I'll usually stay away from it. If it's a parlay, parlay pick, I'll just do a smaller parlay with my more confident picks. Um, what is the next fight? She was supposed to fight K uh, Tracy Cortez, but something something happened with that. That would actually been a, a pretty decent fight. Tracy Cortez is she's pretty hot. Um, next fight: Dustin Jacoby versus Darren Stewart. Dustin Jacoby, we all know he's a really good kickboxer. Uh, Fourteen to five record. 12 and 7 record for Darren the Dentist. Um, yeah, Jacoby, he he has a height advantage by 3 inches. He's got a reach advantage by 2 inches. Uh, and he's got a leg reach advantage by almost 4 inches. So, I mean, it, he's going to try to pick him apart from the outside, uses kickboxing, and Jacoby's actually pretty good with his kickboxing. So, I don't know. Darren Stewart could have a serious problem on his hands with this fight. He has 9 KO slash TKO wins, 1 submission win. Uh, Jacoby has two submission losses and one uh, TKO loss. He's been doing pretty good in the UFC so far. He got a split decision win. Um, it was actually a draw, split split draw with Ian Kutalaba. That's not bad. I just wish he would have had more uh, more output, but he was looking good in the third round in that fight. Um, he just kind of started kind of sluggish. He beat Maxim Grisham by UD, beat Justin Ledet by leg kicks and punches. So yeah, he's a... Uh, basically 3-0. and He should have won the Ian Kutalaba fight, I think. But uh, he's basically 3-0. and Darren Stewart is a very hit or miss fighter. I really don't like picking him at all. Um, I don't even like, yeah, I don't like, I never pick him in parlays because he, he's too hit or miss. One minute he shows up, the next minute he doesn't. Even against the Kevin Holland, when he fought Kevin Holland, like, the takedowns were money for him. Like, he could have easily probably got that win. If, if it was if it was five-round fight, he would have got that win. Because uh, Kevin Holland was gassing out. Darren uh, Darren Stewart tends to gas out himself. He has seven KO slash TKO wins, one submission win, uh, two submission losses, five decision losses. He's never been KO'd, which is kind of it's kind of insane. I thought for some reason I thought I remember him getting TKO'd or KO'd in one of his fights, but I guess not. Um, yeah, he pretty much lost to Eric Anders twice in a row. Even though the first one was an illegal knee, so it was a no contest. But he was losing that fight anyways. He started off kind of strong the first minute, but then he started losing. Um, and he kind of 
I don't know. I guess I can say he took the easy way out, but I don't know. Then maybe the knee really landed hard and he was discombobulated or some shit. So he's basically on a three-fight losing streak. He lost to Kevin Holland by split decision. Uh, he beat Maki Vitolo by guillotine choke. Uh, Bartos Fabinski beat him by UD. So his only win was to Maki Patolo in his last five fights. So that's not good. He beat Duran win by split decision. Bevon Lewis by UD. Another uh, split decision loss to Edmund Shabazi. And all of his fights are super, super close. And that's why I just don't like picking this guy. It's it's too close for comfort. Um, I put a question mark by this one because I really don't know who's going to win it. But... I do feel like if Darren Stewart can get him to the ground and keep him on the ground, um, just with control time and his little baby baby punches that he does, or his little gorilla punches and shit, uh, his hammer fists, he could probably get a win over Jacoby. But Jacoby actually, I think he, I think he has decent takedown defense. Yeah, I mean, no, he doesn't. He has twenty eight percent takedown defense. Why is okay? I'm going to pick Darren Stewart on that. I'm going to base, base the takedown defense. I think Darren Stewart might want to take him down and uh, and just, yeah, play, play him play him in a different type of game for this one. Don't don't try to strike with him. If he tries to strike, I think I think Darren Stewart might get TKO'd, might get caught slipping or something. But then again, he's never been finished like that. He's never been KO'd or TKO'd. So just, just don't play into his game plan. I think that uh, Darren Stewart can get the win. But I don't know. This is a 50, 50 that's a, a serious 50-50 fight, just like this next one, Sam Alvey versus Wellington Terman. Sam Alvey hasn't had a win in forever. Wellington Terman just doesn't have a chin at all. Even as young as he is, he just doesn't have a chin. You, you literally, literally blow on his chin or tap him on his chin with the, your pinky and he's probably gonna go to sleep. Uh, 16 and five record versus 33 and 15 record. Sam Alvey has been around for forever. I feel like he needs to retire. Um, this dude, Wellington Terman's, He's 25 years of age. He's been he's got four KO slash TKO wins. He's seven seven submission wins, two KO losses, which are his last two fights, which is very surprising because he I feel like he started off decent in the UFC. He was one and one, a split decision loss to Carl Robertson, and uh, UD went over Marcus Prez. It didn't start off great, but it, it started off better than what it's looking now. It looks like if he loses this fight, he's getting cut from the UFC, or maybe he'll get one more chance because he's still kind of he's still young and he he does have a, a little bit of a little bit of potential not really i don't really see him going far because he just can't take a punch he doesn't know how to slip um slip punches um the bruno silva fight like he literally just i guess he was trying to go for a submission or something off of his back and bruno just fucking ko'd him dude like nothing didn't waste any time didn't lay on top of him like some of these dudes are doing nowadays um he just went he went straight for the chin and fucking knocked his ass out so um, yeah, I could see Sam Alvey clipping him with something. Sam Alvey, actually, I'm pretty sure Sam Alvey has good uh, takedown defense. But let me see, man. I've been kind of kind of off a little bit lately with some of the some of the stuff that I remember about certain fighters. He has an 82 percent takedown defense. Yeah, he doesn't get taken down that much. That's what I remember from Sam Alvey. He's always, but the only thing he always backs himself against the cage, dude. Sam Alvey backs himself into the cage and he likes to counter strike. And it's just, I don't like fighters that back themselves into the cage like that. He doesn't move, I don't know, he doesn't move around enough for me. He's very flat-footed. He does have that one-punch knockout power. He can he can shut your lights off. Um, I'm going to pick Sam Alvey on this one. It sounds crazy. Most people are probably picking Wellington Terman, but I'm going to pick Sam Alvey. I think he's going to be an underdog, and I think a lot of people are going to be picking Wellington Terman, thinking that he's going to get a, a fast submission victory or some shit. And I don't think Sam Alvey's that easy to submit, and I don't think he's that easy to take down. And Wellington Terman has cardio issues. Um, and Sam Alvey, I mean, he's tough, dude. He's fucking tough. He wouldn't he wouldn't have had that many fights on his record um, and that many fights in the UFC if he wasn't tough. So, yeah, I think he's 0-5 in his last fights, though. So that's not it's not looking good. It's time for him to it's time for him to retire. Um, next fight, Alicia DeCherico versus Abdul Razak Hassan. Uh, DeCherico's coming in on short notice. I'm rocking with Abdul. He's 10 and 4 record versus uh 13 and 5 record. Abdul hasn't hasn't looked super super good in his last few fights though. 10 KO wins, 1 KO loss. We all know who that was too. Uh Chaos Williams, man. I went against Chaos in that fight and it's funny because my girl told me to to pick fucking um Chaos. He was a huge underdog and he's he's got hands and uh yeah, I didn't pick him but she did and Yep. He slept him first round. 
stiff jab pretty much, dude. There wasn't even nothing major. He's on a three-fight losing streak. He lost uh, to uh, Monia Lizaz, which is a really good kickboxer by UD. Lost to Kaylin Williams by KO, uh, which is Chaos Williams. And then lost to Jacob Malkoon by UD in his last uh, last fight. He needs a win here, man. He's fell, he, he fell off. I don't know what the fuck happened. His last win was against Nico Price, and it was a KO, and it was fucking vicious. And he looked in really good shape in that fight. Some of these these last fights that he's lost, he didn't look like he was in his great uh, in the greatest shape that he's been in in previous fights. And DeCherico, man, you can't fucking not be... I mean, it, Abdul doesn't really gas out. I notice he doesn't gas out a ton, but he's just... Some fights he looks flabbier than other other fights. He did, like he doesn't take his weight class. He's weight, his weight cut seriously and shit. Um, Alicia DeCherico, he's a really good kickboxer. So you're not gonna want to just stand and strike with this guy. Um, Abdul likes to pressure his opponents, get him against the cage, and trying to try to just fucking tee off on him as much as he can. But DeCherico's a he's a pretty seasoned kickboxer, dude. Um, six KO slash TKO wins, four submission wins. One submission loss. He's never been KO'd. Four decision losses. I mean, that, that's a decent record. He he beat Joaquin Buckley by KO. It was a head kick and it was nasty. A lot of people were picking Buckley in that fight. Um, and yeah, Jericho was a huge underdog. So in his last three fights before that, that that was a must win for him, and it was a it was a great win because I think he got a bonus for it too. Um, but yeah, he lost to Zach Cummings by UD, Machman Muradoff by UD, which is fighting on this card as well. Uh, and he lost to Kevin Holland by UD. So, yeah, man. I think uh, Abdul's going to get it done, though. Something's telling me that he's going to come out hungrier than ever. And uh, DeChirico's... I don't, I'm not going to say he's going to go to sleep because he's never been KO'd. But I, th I could see Abdul winning this. And if it... If, I mean, if it goes... he Like I said, he has decent cardio. Um, especially for his body frame. But if he tries to just stand and strike with Delicio, which he's probably going to do because he's not really a he's not really a grappler. Abdul's not a grappler at all. Alicio actually has some submission wins, so I could see him trying to take it down, maybe too, uh, take Abdul down and maybe get some submission wins. But um, this is probably going to be a striking match, and I don't see it. I see it either going to the the third round, somebody gets TKO'd in the third round, or it's going to go to decision. Um, yeah, those are my prelim fight predictions. Um, Make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, and let me know who you guys are rocking with on these prelims. I want to know, because um, I fucked up on the last, the last card, and then the card before that I fucked up too. So, not really fucked up. I mean, I guess eight and four is not horrible for picks, but usually when you're used to going ten and ten and twelve, ten and eleven, eleven and twelve, when you get four fucking losses on your on your picks, that's not a good look. So, I try to get all my all my picks as accurate as possible try to make some money and also make you guys some money if you guys are throwing your bets down so uh yeah i'm out